What's up, Tech Heart Rockstars? Hey, we're gonna do a new video. I wanted to talk today about a cool new project that I found named Omacube. Lots of us like themed out Linux, but do we really know how to do it? I'm gonna show you a cool one. Uh, if we look at the website right here, Omacube, an Omakase developer setup for Ubuntu 24.04 by DHH, that's the developer of Ruby on Reels. Rails, I'll have you know. It's themed really nicely. You can see that it has that, uh, what is that, retro, city, cyber, you know, that palm tree stuff. So the developer DHH says, turn a fresh Ubuntu installation into a fully configured, beautiful and modern web dev system by running a single command. And it has a lot of cool software um, already themed for us that we're gonna dive into. Let's watch the video quickly and then we'll jump on over into a fresh Ubuntu install. Amaku turns a fresh Ubuntu installation into a beautiful pre-configured developer environment ready to use by running a single command. This is a way to get people to try a modern version of Linux that not only looks great, but feels great, has all the utilities pre-configured, all the little dot files set up in a nice way that does not require you to scour the internet to figure out all the Linux lore and set up tweaks in order just to see whether Linux is something for you. Does that sound good to you guys? Let's hop over into an Ubuntu desktop. We'll install it. We'll check it out. We'll talk about all the cool software that DHH set it up with. And this is going to be some fun. Let's go. All right, rock stars. So we're booted into an Ubuntu 2404 installation, completely stock. Let me get rid of this video and we'll just dive on in. Let's log into the account. So we've got the Ubuntu startup uh, thing going on here. We'll just skip through all that. We don't want to share our data. Let's get started. This installation is super simple. All we'll do is we'll open up a terminal. I'll make it large for YouTube. Let's grab that command we need. We'll open up Firefox and you can see right here on the Omicube website, it's just one wget command. So I've grabbed that. We'll always do a sudo apt update. And a sudo apt upgrade, just to make sure we're completely up to date. And now, Omicube is as simple to install as pasting one wget command and pressing enter. Let's go! Some of the cool softwares that Omicube Cube includes is Lazy Vim, so you can have the Vim text editor all themed out and it's really cool. Also, Docker is installed with a couple web development, I think Ruby on Rails and a database uh, container pre-installed, but also it uses Lazy Docker. <laughs> Okay, and as we are running through, we're now prompted. It says, to install GNOME extensions, you need to accept four confirmations. So I'll select yes. And on screen here, we'll click install. And install. And these are GNOME extensions. I saw one, it was called Just Perfection. Blur my shell. When you press the Windows or Linux key, it's all blurry and looks cool. So you'll accept those four, and you see the screen start to morph and change behind us. Almost there now, ladies and germs. Okay, we have to select yes again, ready to log out for all settings to take effect. I'm gonna select yes, and we'll let that reboot. I'll catch y'all in Omacube. All right, guys, here we are, let's log in. And we have Amacube. Right off the bat, it looks pretty cool. 
we've got this background. You can see up here in the upper left hand corner, there are six workspaces and you can press on them to switch around or you can do super and the corresponding number. So the Windows key and the corresponding number jumps around your desktops. Let's take a look at some of the stock Omacube apps they want you to use. So let's search for a terminal and they want us to use Alacrity. One thing I wish their install script did was I think they should have removed GNOME terminal and they want us to use Chrome for our browser, but they've left Firefox installed. I think they should have just removed those if you know Omacube wanted us to use Chrome specifically. However, let's get that Alacrity terminal pulled up. And you'll see it's already customized a little bit. Now, if we want to go full screen, we have a couple ways we can do it. We can push F11 to go super full screen, or you can press super and the up key just to maximize it so you still have that bar up top. You can also do super and the arrow keys, left, right, to move it around the screen. But I'll just do super and up to maximize it. In Alacrity, it's running Zellige. What is Zellige? Well, it's like Tmux or Screen. You can press Control P, that's like the activator code, and then the letter N to make a new pane. Then it's Alt and the arrow keys to move around those two panes. We can cut the pane horizontally by typing Control P and then D. Makes another pane. Again, you can do Alt, move around the windows. Let me show you quickly the Omacube command. You can just type in Omacube. Let me make this text a little bigger. Oops. There we go, right? And here's the Omacube helper application. You can get help and it shows you the hotkeys, commands, or tactile. And you can just see some of the hotkeys that are built into Omacube. You have Super W, you can close an app. You have Super Space opens up a search. You can search for other applications. We already covered the moving workspaces with super and the number. And there's all sorts of other hotkeys. Again, that F11 to go super full screen. You can do super T, which brings up a tiling overlay. And now you tap super and we can type like QS to make it take up that two thirds. You see the letters correspond. So if we typed super QA, super Q, A, it would make it really skinny over there. Super T you have to hold. And then we'll make it full screen with, we'll press the super key and Q, D. So these are all the different hotkeys that are built into Omicube. Pretty cool, tiling window manager like. Let's go over to our desktop too and take a look at some other apps that they've pre-installed. Google Chrome for the browser, Alacrity for your terminal. You got Visual Studio Code, WhatsApp, Signal, Spotify, Typora. Typora is a really, really neat way to type. I'll show you quickly. You can open it up. And then if you take this full screen, which was F11, right? It's just a very clear way to type text without any distractions. Super nice. You can also set this up to be, you know, dark colored if you prefer, but that's Typora. You got Zoom, Pinta, which I think is like a photo editor or, you know, paint program, External, Journal, and 1Password. So those are the, some of the GUI apps installed. Let's spin back over to Workspace 1 and continuing with the Omicube command, I'm going to press Q to exit. I'll run it again. Now, we can select theme here, right? So right now we're on the Tokyo Night theme. And there's others that you can pick and it totally changes the theme in all of the Omacube themed apps. Let me exit this window here and I'm going to show you Lazy Vim first. I think there's a shortcut because it uses NeoVim, it's just N. That brings up Lazy Vim. It's just kind of a wrapper to make Vim more usable. It has that FZF, like the fuzzy finder where you can roll through your file browser. Uh, that's really cool and useful. But notice the theming colors here in Lazy Vim colon Q. That'll take me out of Vim. I don't want to save the changes. Now let's change to a different theme just to show you that it switches over all the colors for us. Let's try Groovebox just because everybody knows Groovebox. Cool. Let's go look at the uh, wallpaper and go to the other desktop. So that's like a green theme. Now let's run a Neo Vim or Lazy Vim again. It has to install the changes first, so we'll let that go. But there you can already see the coloring is different. 
So there's that green theme. So again, I'll quit from here. Also, if we restart our terminal, we'll see color changes in it. So let's do that. I'll exit on both of our panes and I'll open up a new terminal. I can show you, you can press Alt and 2 and that opens up like Alt 1 would open up Chrome, Alt 2 would open up your browser and so on and so forth. I can do super up to maximize that window again. Just make the text bigger like we did last time. And now you can see the, uh, the green colored terminal here. So I'll run Omicube again, go to theme, we'll switch back to Tokyo Night, exit out of here and Alt 2 and there's our new terminal. So there's lazy docker, I'm going to run that. It allows you to see your Docker containers just in a way nicer way than I think the Docker command. We currently have a MySQL, a Postgres, and a Redis container. And that was for web development. That's what Omicube is directed towards. You can change your fonts if you like. I sometimes like JetBrains. And just like that, you would change your font. I'm going to switch back. We can see what commands we can run. Oh, here you go. Yeah, there's some of these shortcuts. LT shows nested files and directories. Uh, FF, that's that FZF or fuzzy find files. Looks like you can type dot dot to go back a directory, back two directories, or back three. It has Z, I think that's Zoxide installed. I'm not going to go into it, but it's another cool thing. Type G for git or compress or decompress to create tar.gz file. Well, cool. Let's push this terminal to the left hand side with super left and let's check out some of the other stuff that's installed. We can open up VS Code because I know it's also themed. Once that gets open, I'm going to do Windows or super right and that'll pop it over there. It's got those blue Tokyo Night theming going on. Another cool thing that DHH included, if you just do your normal print screen button, the GNOME screen capture app comes up and that's good and fine. However, if you press control print screen, it opens up FlameShot. I have to allow it the first time. And FlameShot is pretty neat. So let me select the VS Code part over here. I'll select all that. And with FlameShot, you can even like blur stuff out and other cool things. So if you had something that you had to blur out, boom, just like that. And FlameShot has many other features, but in my opinion, it's a better way to take a screenshot in certain instances and you have all these tools to do different things and save it quickly. So that's flame shot with control print screen. We can try super W to kill that VS code window. Yeah, it all just works, man. I really dig this Oma cube. If you go do research on Zellige, which is the uh, multiplexer we're running here, you can learn all their commands. As I said, control P, oops, control P and then N makes a new pane. Um, if you want to, oops, if you want to do it diagonally, it's control P and then D. And that can be really useful once you learn Zellige and the commands a little more. I'm going to make this full screen. I'm going to go F11, which completely takes away our uh, bar up here. But remembering, we can still just press Super 2 to go to our next uh, window over here. So you can have your, let me make this the right way. And so, yeah, what do you guys think? Are you guys Amacube fans? Because I'm kind of digging it. If you want to check this out, just have a regular Ubuntu 2404 install and run this one wget command that you can get at omacube.org. I think you should take a look at it. It's a fun way to get into tiling window managers without doing any of the work. And DHH switched over to Linux just a month ago, but he is a heavy programmer. He's a web developer, but he did a really good job in my opinion. So let me know what y'all think. Rock and roll. Tech heart out.